their home from compulsory purchase. Whose house is it anyway? These council officials walk a well-trodden path that in the past two years has always led to uncomfortable confrontations. I shan't leave here. Mm. If they come here, I've a gun and I'll use it on them. That's a tradition. It's my home and they're not leaving. That's definitely. You'd actually shoot them? Yes, I would, yes. Yes, of course I would. I don't interfere with their home. I've told him, I've warned him. If he tries to interfere here and upset my home, I'll go and smash his, his home up. Which I would. Mm. They're not doing that with me. I'm not a kid, I'm a man. And I'm here and I'm here to stay. Yeah. Well, along the Duke of Leeds. We spend all that money in Ray. For the Water Corporation. For the Water Corporation. A Barnsley Corporation. Billy and Gordon Howard won't vacate their house, which was compulsory purchased by the council for a housing development. Since this story was first told in 1985, building has begun. The chairman of the housing committee explains the council's actions. Well, since the, the programme was first shown in 85, we have in fact re phased the development into three phases to leave the Howard brothers here as long as we possibly can. It's now October 86, houses have been built all the way around their existing property. The time has now come for us to take possession of that land because it is literally holding up the rest of the development. We have 47 elderly persons bungalows waiting to be built on that particular piece of land. I'm afraid, you know, time has come to an end. We've got to move ahead and get possession. For the brothers, these garden gate confrontations have become an unwelcome ritual, a measure of the gap between them and the council. The housing officials will leave without a chance to explain their latest offer of a new house for rent nearby. That's all, Mr. Howard. Did you have a chance to read those letters we left with you yesterday? The brothers, alienated and worn down by the threat of eviction, have given up on everyone. Put light on, Bill. Right. Here we are. This is in paper, Bill, today. Oh, please, I'm being reading it. Because Cargill has made a million. No, he lost a million at all. And we said here we can't make a cracker. Where there is no property, there is no injustice, wrote a philosopher 300 years ago. Since 1978, the brothers have been fighting for the right to stay in the house they own. In March 1985, the council was threatening eviction by bailiffs. I'm not frightened that bailiffs come in, I'm not frightened anybody come in. Why should I be frightening me? Oh no, I should be a, a poor man. A man's got to look at and stand up and, and fight for his own. That's an Englishman's way. What they're doing, they're doing a Nazi way. They've the Hitler come, way. They've all come from Leeds to know that. All these years, you boys from Leeds, what's to an Englishman what to do? Would Hitler like it? He'd have gassed a lot. The Howard brothers, like I would imagine the majority of the nation, believe still that an Englishman's home is his castle. Uh, it, it isn't, I'm afraid. Um, it's his castle, but if the council wants it, or if a government department wants it, then it's their castle. These are the original deeds for Warren Palm House. And we have a right to stop here forever. It says on, forever. What belongs to us, what's been left to us, with his father and his mother handed down, and we keep them. Which you've got to do. It's all signed with the Duke of Leeds. Before there was a corporation. The Howard brothers' medieval sense of property leads them to believe they have an inviolate right to stay in Rose Cottage where they were born 70 odd years ago. They refuse to accept the council's compulsory purchase order. The Barnsley Council believe that demolishing Rose Cottage and taking its five acres of grounds would best serve a community which needs another 600 houses built. The council, in partnership with the Yorkshire Metropolitan Housing Association, wants to build new houses and old people's accommodation on the site. The brothers' income from a make-do-and-mend cardboard salvage business is threatened by the move. This, then, is a conflict between individual rights and community needs. 
between a householder's sense of place and the powers of the state, between two old men's simple taste and a planner's vision. We've done a lot of work here and we've worked all our lives. Why should we leave? It's our own place, we own it, they don't. I'm Robert Gordon Howard and I've lived here all my life, I'm 73 years of age and I don't want to leave the place. We're not going to leave. Our decision is made to stop here. We shall not leave for anybody. This is Brother Bill. He's been in the forces. I'll tell you yourself. Tell him. Yes, I went first militia. First militia. I must be one of the first men to go from Barnsley. They kept me in over seven years. I couldn't manage about me. <laughs> it's true. Yes, I've been, I've been all the way through it. I went in the Eighth Army. I've been all the way through it. Most of fact, they gave me two hours to live through being in the forces. I had a bad do. We're inside. Then they come, they want to start and turn you out your own, no more for your four foot country. I think it's a very, very shabby do. We used to keep a great lot of pigs at one time, peacocks and all. But six peacocks, and we'd be turkeys with everything in them. We'd all grapevines growing, big grapevines. <laughs> And you so long down with two shops and we used to supply shops and supplying with bacon, kill his own pigs. We'd everything here. My father was a rich man. We were short of nothing. There were five lads, five brothers on us, and seven sisters. And my mother brought my sister's two kids up as well. It was all us busy, they were all us having fun with this and fun with that, and all the summer going off, it was alive, you know. You see a big family and it's, now it's dwindled down to just two owners here. There's only two owners. They've all gone. There's half of the family dead. The other half is married and scattered up and down. There's me and Bill still at home with a single. We shouldn't like to leave because we've nowhere to go. Why did you never get married? We never seemed to get time. <laughs> Red love for a night. <laughs> Oh, he asked for it, he asked for it. <laughs> no, it's a serious business, that getting married business. It's all right to allow one to have two wives, but one will get some come bang on it over and warm up while you're on with the other. That's, <laughs> that's the best idea with that, wasn't it? No, all the thing come to, can't sit in a three piece suite. No, no. <laughs> what I want to do this morning is firstly to summarise the events leading up to and including the confirmation of the Home <coughs> Street compulsory purchase order by the Secretary of State and secondly to review the activities which we need to undertake in order that the Home Street site can be assembled and conveyed to the Yorkshire Metropolitan Housing Association. This working party of council officers has dealt with a development which was first proposed in the late 70s. So, what, what Once a scheme is agreed on by the politicians, it continues to gather its own bureaucratic momentum over the months, or in this case, the years. I'll speak to the order, man. Uh, if you will recall, in January last year, a public inquiry was held in the town hall uh, into the objections into the compulsory purchase order. The, the area around the Howard Brothers Rose Cottage was described in the urban plan as neglected, overgrown and unsightly. Comprehensive redevelopment, it added, will provide an opportunity to bring into use land which makes no contribution to the amenity of the area. Grants were offered to householders for improvements. Other houses were bought and renovated. This cost one million pounds but the Housing Association offered further finance to build these new homes, including sheltered accommodation for the elderly, but the brothers refused to sell. Conscious of the waiting list of 1,000 pensioners for these homes, the council applied for a compulsory purchase order. Proceedings were well advanced in 1984. Based on, again, on the assumption that uh, we, we go through all this or they don't want to be rehoused and we, we find ourselves in a situation where we have to go and obtain a court order. You've said three months do it. And that three months would be... No, that would take you through to about October, July, wouldn't October. it? Mm. Mm. What follows after that to it? <sighs> well, uh, again, it depends on the Howard brothers' reaction to the court order. Yeah. They, um, at the end of the day, it may be necessary for the court to send the, the bailiffs in. 
Well, the only thing is, in view of the, the situation, I think I'll, I'll make early arrangements to go up and see the Howard brothers and uh, just see if we can find out what the housing requirements are. Yeah. And uh, I say we'll arrange a visit as soon as we can. All right. OK. All right, if we can just summarise then. Um, I think the first thing we need to do is just to... Yeah. Uh, there's one thing, there's some being, isn't there? I've come with Mrs. Dinning, my lettings yeah. officer. Uh, what we're wanting to explain to you is the situation we've now reached with regarding the development of this land. Is it possible for us to come in? No, we're not having nobody in here, I'm sorry, no. No, we uh, can't let nobody come in, we're not doing that. Look, uh, we're not interested in selling it, we want to live here, live my life, Bart. Yeah, I know that, but... I'm 73 years old, I'm not going to run out of my own for you. The thing is... Would you run out in your own? No, no uh, what, what I'm saying, Mr. Howard, is this, that the compulsory purchase order has been confirmed. We are authorised to compulsory purchase this land off you. It doesn't matter what you're authorised, what you're not. Listen, I'm against it. I'm not buying a great cup of nobody. You've got 50,000 houses. I've only one. Mm. I we, want my own. We yeah. would offer you another one, Mr. Howard. I don't want that. I'd offer you one. Uh, now, offer uh, you, will you leave your house? In the event of you no, moving out. No, no, that with some sense. Not talk to you. Uh, in the event of you moving out. But if we're not going to move out, we shan't move out. Will you be able to make your own arrangements? What would your dad have said if he said you on this job? I've told you about that before. What mm -hmm. would he have said? Well, no, it, you know, I'm, I'm right. an agent what of the town. What you're saying isn't right and mm -hmm. it's not proper. I'm very near next to dying now. I'm 70 odd year old, 73 mm -hmm. year old. That's it. I'm not letting it go. I'm mm -hmm. stopping here. We are late. I don't want to sell it. Well, Don't you think you would like to be a little bit more comfortable? I'm comfortable you? as I am, I'm happy. Mm. I'm not be happy than what I am. But wouldn't I'm you... I'm sure to nothing, I've everything, I've my own ends, I can get my own eggs, I have everything I want, I've my own dog, my own little castle, where my dad left us, my mother left us. But if, if, we had, year. if we had something to offer you in this area, wouldn't you even you just go and have a look at it? You can't offer anything better than what I've got, and you can't offer a place like this. If but you don't find you... a place like this, yes. Well, it will be a council house, a dwelling, oh, uh, not a small holding. We, we're, not we're, not a position, we're not in a position. 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 We're
It was against me straight away, the inspector what was there. Mr. Ayward? Yes, Mr. Ayward. Yeah, he he said, was saying, how do you make it? You've only lived, you've lived here hundred years. I said, because my father lived there when he was a young man. And how did this happen and how did that? He was against me straight away. He was with the, he was with the council lot. He wasn't with me one eye and that man. To quote from his report, the development area is generally untidy and messy and stands out like a sore thumb in sorry contrast to the much larger remainder of the improvement area. So the inspector decided that my client's land wasn't to his liking and could therefore be improved, so they're being compulsory purchased. That, in my view, is an appalling use of the law, and in my view, that particular uh, right to compulsory purchase land is in clear breach of anyone's private rights. And make no mistake, this section can be used against anyone who owns land, even your own home, as in my client's case. I like everything about it. Don't you like your house? Yeah. It's beautiful. We think it is. And it's not, we, we're not hurting anybody. And the place is all all right for us. We own it. It's paid for. We pay all those rates. <coughs> why, why should they want to come and take it off us? If I turn up on the great day and he's hostile, what, what happens then? Do I walk away? No. There's I, nothing you can do. I'll have to... I mean, the, the one I'm suggesting is if, if you turn up your site survey and you, you're not allowed onto the site, for instance, they refuse entry, then your course of action, obviously, you've got to go back to Stuart. You've got to inform Stuart, and Stuart will obviously take the appropriate action. Mm -hmm. we'll, uh, we'll deal with that when, when it arrives. You play it by ear exactly mm -hmm. as you feel that you should. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, a bit lovely. They keep pestering us about this place, Corporation. Oh, never left us alone. Then they've got enough ground. Good God, that's enough for out. The clothes are post up. Look how far I have to walk. I have to walk right down it. Other end of town, they go to a post office. They stop post office here. They, they built flats and put them in, then stop. There's somebody mad, there's somebody out in the rear. There's somebody silly. The young lass come up and she won, she won in her twenties and she was telling me what to do, how to live. And she never ought to be on that job at all. It's, it's impossible to, to deal with people like that. My young Jeff Wade is up on the street, young West Jeff. He, he won your little ladders for bloody painters last time I seen him. What they've done, they, they built these people, they, these bungalows, these houses, and they give the poor buggers a great big piece of land to turn up, and the people what's 80 and 90 year old, they can't turn it over. It's too much for them. After the public inquiry, the council's compulsory purchase order was confirmed by the Secretary of State. Once this was done, the brothers had no right of appeal against the council's planning decision. Surprisingly, they could only appeal against a technical mistake in the council's case. Ian Wood, the brother's solicitor, realised that the only hope was to take the matter to the European Court of Human Rights. In June 1984, after eight months' consideration, the court had not decided whether it even had jurisdiction to look at the case. The council's development also affects the brother's neighbours, including the family in this house, but they are not losing land on a large scale and they are proud of the improvements to their homes. I don't like to think that there's going to be like a council estate at back of my house. 
But I would prefer a council estate to what we've got now, uh, the vermin. Uh, they won't let the rat catchers on at all. Um, and as I said, the mess that's there now, uh, the summer is terrible, it's, you know, it smells. And I would prefer to have old people and council houses than what we've got now, which uh, I think lowers the area. They are two old men, and I don't think anybody here that, uh, is in favour of what um, the government can do, like walk in and take your land. We, we don't agree with that. But then again, the council uh, have really tried to accommodate them. They have discussed it with them, the same as they have with, with me, because my property is involved as well. And they have tried to come to some arrangement, even offering them to build a house on the land, which... And all this they've turned down, haven't they? Yes. They've turned down completely. Mm -hmm. They uh, won't listen to reason in any shape or form. They're not two poor old men. They are two old rich men that could live in a life of luxury. And poverty that they're living in, uh, I don't think the social services would let anybody at their age live in it. They would be very worried that they haven't got electricity, they haven't got proper facilities. They've no hot water. No. Uh, and they're, they're living in, in amongst of a load of vermin. What is that? Hey, what is that? Here. Yeah. Come on, let you in, eh? Oh, get you dinner. There's plenty of dollars to do a job, isn't there? There's three million not dollars, give him, give him some work. Get a new team in. There might be about 30 cats. We keep them to keep vermin down, you see, such as rats, because all the drains have been left up and around here with the corporation pulling houses down. We can't use poison, we're having dogs and cats and poultry, else we should poison them. And these cats and dogs seem to catch them, they're very good. I've seen cats go up and down with rats, catch them. These dogs, they catch them as well. If he knows there's one there, he'll start whistling and making a noise, and as soon as he starts, it's dead in a second. We either bury them, or burn them. We've been trying to clean this rubbish up. Yeah. And, uh, I think we're back in loads of horse light because if we come again tomorrow it'll be as bad. It's because there's, there's as you can see there's rats there and that stuff's been tipped since we come this morning after we've been tipped with one load. So uh, I think we're back in loads of horse. And you can see all these there's rat holes down here. And uh, if I lived here I should uh, be complaining about this lot. It's come over since we've been here this morning. Yeah. Yes. That fun? Do you find that surprising? <laughs> no, not really. I think most of the stuff comes from over all. It's the uh, easiest way to get rid of some of it, isn't it? Monday, June the 4th, 1984. The council have arrived with a drilling rig to test the soil strata. Without samples, the architect won't be able to finalise plans and obtain a building tender. Due to the mountains of cardboard in the driveway, the council consider breaking down a fence to get the drilling rig onto the brother's land. There's something that's still behind the, the Land Rover and trailer. Well, if you go behind the Land Rover, it, it, it will in fact fit up there, rather, rather than have to break the walls down. Yeah, but we're prepared to reinstate even if we take a wall out to get in. Well, yeah, but, you know, try explaining that to people who live in the place. It's, uh, it, it, it's not quite that simple. Uh, Morning. As I think you'd expect, they're not prepared to let people on unless they have to. The fact that you've chosen to compulsory purchase it doesn't alter the fact it's their home. And, and, and to violate that home in the manner which you propose doing, just for the sake of waiting one month, is not, in my view, acceptable. So, in fact, one is, is bringing on a confrontation that might be able to be avoided. Mm. Well, uh, my instructions are to uh, make sure that... Uh, we can do the drilling today. Uh, we, we don't see that that's going to affect any application to Strasbourg. You've made, you, you had the appeal. 
Um, you, you, had, you had the public inquiry, mm -hmm. you had the Secretary of State's decision, you then had the right to appeal to the High Court if you felt that, there, that uh, the compulsory purchase order had not been made properly yes. on legal grounds, but you didn't, no. you didn't take that right. No, that's, we would only have that uh, right of appeal on the basis of a point of law, which in our view didn't exist. No, but uh, if, you, if you were expecting the council to delay their scheme, wouldn't it have been uh, prudent to tell us what you were doing, the, rather than wait until the council, we'd arranged all this and then, and then come in at the last minute? No, the council's been prepared to wait a year since the, since the order was confirmed. I really don't see that one month is going to hurt anybody either way. I'll, uh, I'll just pop off for, shoot for a few minutes and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come back. Can I just... Uh, Going to let them do that. We're fighting for it. We well, won't fight him for his property. Whilst I sympathise with the fact you don't want them gone. on, All there gone. is nothing legal that I can do to stop them coming on today. There is further action we can take later, but any court today would say that f that we are not entitled to stop them come on to drill. We can't get them because there isn't a way and we're not going to let them knock the place to pieces to suit them. Once they start and they get on here, we'll never stop them. And you know that. And we're not going to allow it. It's always a That's problem, it. I know. That's the end of it. We're not letting them come on. They're not bound to come on and disturb our ground. I've my dogs and everything here, and we try to, put, to yeah, stop them. We try to stop them. Well, all I can do is advise you that if the police are called, and if you do try to stop them, it may well be that the police might choose to arrest you, and there'd be nothing I could do about <coughs> that. What for? Arrest us what for? And if there's a murder or something like that, but no. it isn't that at all. No, the police can come on, for example, to stop a breach of the peace. They can come on, uh, for example, to make sure that someone who has a legal right to do something is entitled to do it. And what they would do today is say there is likely to be a breach of the peace if they force their way in, and they will be there to see that the drilling crew who will be coming are let on to do what they're legally entitled to do. <laughs> Bill! Did that? Lay it went down there. Police is at gate, they want a word with us. Um, we've just been called to find out what the incident is in actual fact. Um, what can you tell us about it? Well, they want him to break fence down and come in our place, or we don't want them in like that. We want them to come the proper way when we've moved cardboard. What, what, this cardboard over here? There's some cardboard where they can't get up for it, you see. haven't <laughs> um, fetched it yet. What's happened is that the local authority um, have got some instruction or order of some description that will allow them onto your land. Um, it looks like they may, um, they may have, well, there's no doubt at all about it, they've got to come on today. Well, they can't get on for this cardboard, you see. <laughs> they can't get on for cardboard. You've no objection to them coming on and doing the drilling, providing no, that paper has been moved. Provided they come in proper way, officer. That's it. Right. Smashing players up. We've a lot to lose if they smash players up. We should be scared them to come over and they'll come and move this cardboard yeah, and yeah. come the proper way. But there's another point insofar as that the, the local authority have also got a considerable amount of equipment and resources out there that uh, are costing them a lot of money. Well, and uh, what, what we're trying to do, we're not wanting to upset anybody, are we? No. We're to sort of uh, get some look. agreement. If arrangements can be made for that paper to be moved in the very near future, you will allow the council onto your land. Yeah. Stop. So if we have a quick word with the council, can we come back and have another quick natter to you? Yes. Will that be all right? Yes. That's too much. We'll see it. what we can sort out. That's all right, it. Mr. Allen. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Right, thank you. They were given the warning two weeks ago, weren't yeah. they, that we were arriving today? Yeah, so we've arrived for quite a yeah, while. Yeah, but I mean, even not an ounce. I mean, I mean, even so, so to 14 days. Oh, it's not, it's not a phenomenal length of time, is it? Are you, are, well, it is to do something. I mean, if you say they can do it in nine, 24 hours, they could have done it in 14 well, days. Well, yes, I, yes, I appreciate that. Um, 
we're the pants here. We, you want to get we on? We want to get on, I'm afraid. Yeah, and you want to get on, you want to get on now? We need to go in the top section here. In top front section of these houses. Why? I'd have said. Why are these part of your work as well? Pardon? Are these? No, these are private houses, but all this vacant land is in the redevelopment side. Yeah. This is here now. That's better than talking over a garden fence. <laughs> Right, gents. I know that you've got one or two irons in the fire in respect of trying to sort it out. I know Mr. Wood, Woods mentioned it to me, where, um, where, you, where you've appealed to the, to, to the European Court, etc. If they, if, I'm sure if they uphold your appeal, um, then the council will have to uh, will have to hang about until yeah. until it's finished. Well, that's by the by. For today, are you agreeable for them to go up there if they agree to mend the fence as soon as it's finished? He wants to put him back. He wants to put him back. We'll in we'll, we'll, we'll stop I you. Agree we'll with make you sure there. it's done right. <coughs> I mean, we can't do any more than that. Yeah. Uh, but all we want, as I said, we, we, we want to we want it to be peaceful. We want it to be sorted out. We want to try and get a little bit of an agreement. Although the brothers don't know it, it isn't only the awaiting drilling rig that has given the council a sense of urgency. If the building doesn't start soon, the council will lose the grant allocated to the scheme. So in actual fact building on that line too, and then returning, that's the boundary there. Probably have more peace now than you ever had before. No, I know. I mean, once we get all this bits and bats off, we're going to be right. Council drilling test later proved to be satisfactory. It will not work with me, I shan't leave a place, but I bloody hell, what for then? November 1984, the European Court had not decided whether it had jurisdiction in July. A letter with the third and final offer of rehousing has arrived from the Council. But the brothers are already suspicious and are becoming more agitated and desperate. It's incomprehensible to them that no price has yet been offered for the land. Not a dictator. The council won't negotiate until the brothers allow the district value onto the land to fix a price. Result stalemate. Although the land might fetch a couple of hundred thousand pounds for commercial redevelopment, the council's market price is unlikely to be more than 50,000. This is a house that we're able to offer to Mr. Howard and his brother. It's within 50 yards of where he's living. And if you want to come inside, we'll just show you what the accommodation comprises of. It's the typical kind of house in, for this area. It has been improved uh, up to a 10 point standard. The living room uh, is 
heated by a gas fire and through into the rear we have a living kitchen the door leading into a yard at the back um, and then we the store cupboard is in this corner over here so that is the accommodation on the ground floor which is as I said previously, the normal accommodation for this type of house in this area. The back bedroom is through here. The bathroom and toilet are just around the corner there. Two other bedrooms at this side. From the rear, uh, it overlooks the communal yard and naturally there'll be no provision for keeping livestock and if Mr Howard and his brother did become tenants of the council it would naturally be subject to the tenancy regulations which restricts the keeping of pets to one dog and one cat. I don't think we're going to see them. Could we have a word with you? Could we have a word with you? Can I have a word? Go and get some bloody washing done, you. Go on, get it washed up. We've brought some keys, Mr. Howard. These go with bloody keys. Go on, you silly bugger. Please, for one in. I'll break in by bloody house and knock it to pieces. We don't want to break in. No, bugger off. All all we've done is brought these keys for you. We don't want keys. Bugger off, we and we'll give it out. We don't want to have to go on. I know, but the council... They give a mic, council, or they neither. They're in a position to ideas. apply for possession. You want to get it of you. You're not old enough to interfere with me on your bloody baby. Go on. Well, we've got you some keys Take to go keys and look at river. another property, Mr Howard. Get the bloody keys. I don't want them. Get on. Look all, we're asking, all we're asking the is to look at them. Look at them, be saying. It's only a hundred yards from where you are Just now. See, it's all to do you. Bug it off and get it washed up. Go on. You cheeky bugger. Go on. Not a cheeky bugger. No, no, no. Because if I'm a he's going to see what game they're on with. He's going to say, no, mind, no, that's no to me. This is my bloody woman. They bugger off. Go on. Take the oak. They'll not get it. Nobody else neither. You realise this is the third I realise this is I realise that it's the bloody talk. You've been trying to get out of power, ain't you? The government's told you to get out of power. You cheeky buggers. Go on now, beat it. You're only asking. I know it's now, don't they? Take the bloody oak. Come with us and pother. So we take it you're not going to look at it? Go on, bugger off. You go and get a bloody house. Take you. All right, Mr. Howard. Get them to go and have a look at it, even though it's so near. No. I'm afraid not. Uh, well, long the Duke of Leeds. We spent all that money in rent. For the Water Corporation. For the Water Corporation, a Barnsley oh, Corporation. No. It belonged to Duke of Leeds. And the house still stands. The keep going it Law Scottish. I don't even know it's two bloody houses, not one. They don't know that. Yeah, that's how much they know about it. Two houses together. It's the Garden two Cottage and, and Law Scottish. October 1986. Work on the development is advancing. The council claim that only Rose Cottage and its level ground will be suitable for the planned old people's accommodation. Following public reaction after this film was first shown, the council had second thoughts on the brothers' rehousing. This is the, uh, the four-bedroom detached house that we've now got for the Howard brothers. It's all the garden area, quite a sizable garden. By building the development in stages, they have managed to postpone moving the brothers. The council team has failed in its attempt to get the brothers to consider their latest offer, a chance of renting this new home just beyond the end of their own garden. A good sized kitchen to this side here, down in kitchen. The brothers don't attend the tour of this smart house. Heating on this house, gas fired central heating. The easy clean fitted kitchen is unlikely to be of interest to them. 
they are becoming more and more reclusive as the endless dispute convinces them that the world is against them. It's a good size, I'd say. It's as big as what they're certainly what they're using now from the, the present size. About third of an acre. Yeah, in the region, within a third of an acre, the whole plot. It's certainly a treasure, and you think when they compare it with uh, what they've got now and what we're offering. You can see it just across the wall there, it's, it's so much better. Holed up in their own world of Rose Cottage, the brothers brood about the dispute, about the betrayal as they see it of the European court to act on their case, about the failure of media coverage to affect the outcome, and about the end of, to them, an apparent reprieve enabling them to stay in their home. Only their pets seem to offer any consolation. We'll keep the offer now for... Two weeks at least, and I think, hope they might think again about it. Okay. From a legal point of view, the council own the land on which the Howard's house is situated, and if they will not cooperate with the council at all, the council need to redevelop the land for social purposes, and the only alternative is to go for what's called a sheriff's warrant, which is a directive to the under-sheriff of the county, to instruct a bailiff to come in and enforce possession. It's obviously not something the council wished to countenance, but we may well be forced into that situation. However, before we get to that stage, we're going to try once more to deliver a letter to them by recorded delivery or registered post, explaining exactly what it is that's on offer to them. It'll be a day for long when they'll all, these pits will finish and close down, and it's very soon and there'll be hundreds of houses empty in Barnsley. Let me tell them that. The day's not far off, and all these houses will be empty. They'll not be able to let any of them off, because they'll be all be empty. It'll be a ghost town. So I want to think very carefully as the Barnsley Council, how they spend their money. They'll be left with a lot of property on the hands. Empty houses. Can't they see that? Can't they see farther than the noses? What's going to happen? Why run into a lot of debt? From the council's point of view, I would hope that they accept the offer. It's a genuine attempt to solve the problem that uh, we're all faced with in a, a way that's acceptable to, to all concerned. I don't think the Howards, if they would take the time to look at it, could grumble at the accommodation, the size of the, uh, the land that's there. They could carry on uh, you know, with their business. They could carry on their own lifestyle with slight modifications, I, I would hope. But uh, hopefully they would accept. Realistically, I think we've got to face the uh, the prospect of having to enforce eviction. They want everything that can put the hand on the, the greediest and selfish people there is in the world. In the bunch of people, the councillors. They've never finished. They want everything to look everybody dry. If nobody has nothing on it themselves. We're not bound to give way to them. Well, I think we've had our day and we've said our say. See what they say about what's said. Don't you think that's a fair decision as what we've made? Let somebody else have a go. Try somebody else, not us. They've done enough damage to us for a lifetime. My mother, she died here. My father died here. And we want to die here. The brothers, to their surprise, discovered that they were not without some local support as the deadline for the bailiff's arrival approached. The arrests of a number of people occurred an hour ago as supporters of the Howard brothers in their fight to prevent Barnsley Council taking possession of their cottage confronted a cordon of police officers. Scuffles broke out after the two sides had faced each other all night. More than a hundred local people gathered, held back by 50 police officers. An air rifle shot was fired and Billy Howard was arrested. Then, just before midnight, a cheer went up as Billy Howard returned. It was a defiant reception for the bulldozers, but the Howard brothers had finally given up the fight. At 1.30 this afternoon, Billy Howard left Rose Cottage to the council and the developers. They all from out this lot. They want everybody's land. A bit better, thanks. Where are you going, Gordon? Chip Farm. Are you leaving Rose Cottage for good, then? 
We don't know yet. We don't know. What are your thoughts about Barnsley Council? They know, go down with it. They know, if they do it, we also do it. We all people who test property. This is for nothing. We've done this for nothing. Aren't you going now to concentrate on making a new home in this house in Silkston, though? My time of life, there's no new. I've gone through a lifetime. It never ought to have happened. Never ought to have happened.